Welcome to Living Life. May the Lord bless you as you walk together with Him. Are you a sophomore in life? You know the word sophomore is an interesting word made up with two words, uh, sophos or sophia and the moras morhan, and it talks about um, being a wise one at the same time a foolish one. Wise fool. Uh, especially uh, 10th grade in high school, uh, somebody may be very uh, smart in knowing some things, but not smart enough and does not know fully, widely what's going on. And sometimes uh, we find uh, ourselves as a sophomore, sophomore in life, but sophomore in ministry. Uh, some of the people that are uh, dangerous are people that are dangerous enough and they have enough experience to be dangerous in serving God and serving people. Uh, dangerously enough and equipped to be a Sunday school teacher when they know how to do certain things, but still do not know how to really love and care for people. Well, today's message is for a sophomore in ministry and how Jesus may be speaking to me and to you about how we can grow up and learn deeper lessons of following Jesus. Let's talk about it together. Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 10. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to sin are bound to come, but woe to that person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. In today's passage, Jesus speaks about three topics, three lessons that are important lessons for us as we are to grow as people that are serving the Lord. And the first one is a lesson on sin. You know, we know about sin, and unless we repent from our sin and turn to God and receive His forgiveness, we cannot be God's children. And sin is something that's powerful, and then it could have a powerful effect on our lives. You know, when I was younger in ministry, I used to uh, be very critical of other people's sin. Uh, I used to, I remember, uh, in my youth group years, and they'd be critical or pointing out why uh, they're sinning and then what they're doing wrong and how they need to uh, shape up. But then I didn't realize uh, the way that I was carrying out correction or criticism and often uh, brought about a deep hurt in the lives of uh, many young people. And then many quietly left uh, the church and they didn't want to come back again. But even later on, I got to meet many people and they were struggling with the difficulty that they had with their leaders in the way that how they treated them, especially when these people were weak and were at fault. I realize it's very easy to be critical, but Jesus here reminds us an important lesson 
that rather than jump so quickly to point out what's wrong with others, here he says, you need to first uh, oversee and care for, and then you need to watch your lives. Uh, in a sense, you need to first live the truth uh, so that through your example, others will follow rather than pointing out what's wrong with others. First, live it first. And so that others may be rebuked, not with your words, but in the way that how you live the truth. But in the way that you also relate to those who may have sinned as well. Jesus continues and talks about when somebody is at fault or has sinned, be gentle enough to restore somebody back to God. Rather than be quick to condemn, help them to come to realize what and why and how they can experience God's grace of not sinning. And then when they come to a point of repentance, extend grace so that they may be reconciled and renewed and be able to walk together with God again. Uh, more and more I realize how difficult it is to restore somebody to Christ, how difficult it is to help somebody who's sinning to experience forgiveness, deliverance, freedom. And so, rather than be quick to judge and jump on what other people are doing wrong, we need to be gracious and learn to deal with others' sin in a, a gentle, mature manner. Uh, second thing that Jesus mentions is the lesson about faith. You know, when you desire or begin to serve the Lord, uh, you find yourself uh, up against impossible situations. As you're trying to help somebody to grow and changing somebody is impossible. Or when you're leading a group, or you're trying to help a ministry to go forward, and sometimes it is very difficult. And, and many times you become very discouraged so easily. And Jesus here reminds us, yes, you need to have faith. You need to have faith in God. The having and desiring faith in God is not to seek quantity of faith, but rather it's seeking of quality. It's not, God, I'm going to pray more. I'm going to shout out more. I'm going to be bold, more bold. No, uh, we need to come to know God and who God is and then learn to place our trust in Him. But as we learn to trust in Him, we need to also learn to cultivate that faith and trusting and being faithful as well. Now let me try to say it this way. Because you know that God loves you, God is together with you, God has put you there where he has placed you, uh, would you continue to pray and expecting God to work? Have faith in him and then live it out. Would you also share the gospel and to let others know about who God is as people respond and accept the gospel people will begin to experience God changing their lives as you begin to minister grace and help people to experience healing, forgiveness, renewal. As you act on faith and as you act and love and serve faithfully, trusting God that you will begin to see God will act and God will bless and then your ministry will experience God's blessing more and more. One more lesson, the lesson on success. Sometimes, not just when you are discouraged, but when you find yourself, the things are going so well, God is using you powerfully, that's also a time where you need to learn to pause and recognize it's not you, but it is God and to give God praise and give God glory and then bring the honor to Him. Not just when things are tough and sometimes when things are going well, if you think, hey, 
God's using me. Uh, I am the one that's bringing about all these changes and God's using me. Aren't you glad that you have me, God? If we have that kind of a attitude, uh, we may see some powerful things happening, but we will not be serving God in a long ways. You see, we need to learn to recognize God. I was just doing my job. It was you who have blessed me and then used me. God, it is you. Apart from you, I cannot do anything. Learn to not take glory and success as if it's yours, but learn to surrender and give all your glory unto the Lord. I heard somebody mentioning long ago when people compliment me for doing a good job and I say thank you and bring all those as if those are flowers and bring it to the Lord in the evening and say thank you Lord. It is you that have done it. This is all for you and it is you that deserve all the glory. Learn to give thanks and then learn to be humble before the Lord. These are some simple yet important lessons that Jesus is reminding us. Today's message and reminder, the lesson on sin, lesson on faith, and lesson on duty. I hope that you will ponder upon them. I hope that you will learn these deeper lessons so that you will become more mature in serving the Lord and being used of Him. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you continue to teach us and help us to grow, to be more like you, not just in what we are doing, but also in how we are serving you. In Jesus' name, Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the Lord. 